Okay, hello everyone, welcome. This is Cultural Competency in the Workplace. My name is Sehari Simmons. Thank you so much for um, viewing this, whether it's recording or live. Um, we dived into the Intercultural Development Inventory, um, and this is a series, so this is the second one. Um, if anyone's expecting the cognitive psychology lens um, on diversity, equity, and inclusion. That one will be scheduled for next Tuesday. Um, this evening, we are focusing on cultural competency in the workplace. Um, and let me know if anyone has any questions about that or any past videos in order to catch up. We can um, definitely arrange that. All right, so um, just as a uh, review, um, the Intercultural Development Inventory is, a, um, is an assessment that um, ultimately uh, provides a baseline um, indication of where our cognitive um, underlying um, deep cultural, intercultural competency lies. How do we show up in our relationships and the workplace to others, um, and also how do we act and behave um, in those relationships um, in the workplace or outside of that? How do we actually um, interpret or receive a person's commonalities versus their differences? And, and, and what that means um, when, we, when we do or do not. These are all elements within these characteristics um, that give us indication on how effective we are with communicating and um, connecting with other cultures different from our own. Okay, um, so just as, um, Another review, let's go into the, um, the different characteristics along the continuum. Um, the further to the left of the continuum, it is considered a, minor, a monocultural mindset. That monocultural mindset, the closer we are towards the left of the continuum, the more it is known that we aren't as effective as we think in bridging relationships, bridging gaps, and communication um, with other individuals. The further to the right of the continuum um, is considered a global mindset or an intercultural mindset. This is considered to be more effective um, when it comes to um, connecting with others and, um, you know, um, effectively behaving in a way that is, um, that feels authentic and genuine to other cultures, okay? All right, so um, the first characteristic is considered denial, and denial is a characteristic in which um, we tend to um, deny that there is any difference you know i don't see color or um you know we're all the same or you know um there is a tendency to um rely on um the understanding of others based off of their own um personal um, um experiences and behavior there's little recognition of more complex cultural differences, okay? Um, so, you know, they may also say things like, oh, well, why learn more about cultural differences or um, express a disinterest, um, which could be in the form of avoidance of acknowledging um, the role of cultural differences and may not even see the value in knowing more about cultural differences. Um, in the workplace, um, these individuals may communicate things such as, oh, well, I'm not sure why, why, why we're even doing this as an organization. Why are we focusing on 
cultural competence, you know, isn't, isn't there more um, positive things we can be focusing on when we work so hard? Um, I don't really see anything that has to do with culture, you know, it's really just about performance. It's about who works the hardest. It's, it has nothing to do with any of that. Okay, this is um, a denial um, experience and mindset. And we can um, maybe even conclude um, how this person may operate when it comes to team meetings or team building exercises or um, even working with different groups in order to meet project goals and deadlines. Okay. Um, the next characteristic, um, the developmental orientation is polarization. Now, polarization is still a monocultural mindset. And it, it stems from a judgmental sort of um, orientation, um, making sense of um, culture based off of an, an us versus them mentality, um, can even appear overly critical um, towards cultural differences and um, may even feel um, you know, under attack or, or from other cultures, okay? Um, someone in the defense um, developmental orientation is uncritical toward one's own cultural practices um, and overly critical toward other cultural practices. Um, you know, likely to exhibit a sense of superiority, um, you know, communicating things such as, oh, well, we want you to be a part of our society as if um, they are um, the society to assimilate to. Um, over emphasizes um, mainly negative differences towards other cultures and under emphasizes commonal commonalities. Okay. Um, and negatively evaluates other cultures and cultural differences because, you know, you make sense of differences based off of. Um, I am the best, and then you have to categorize other cultures, you know, um, in line with that ideal, um, usually in, in, in the defense orientation, okay? Um, for the reversal orientation, overly critical towards one own, one's own cultural practices very uncritical toward another group's cultural practices, um, you know, may take on the cause of an oppressed group, you know, even when they are not of that, um, of that oppressed group. Um, other, you know, other cultural practices given special privilege, um, you know, and, and, in, this, and in this case, overemphasizes largely positive differences towards other cultures and underemphasizes commonalities. Um, sees diversity as the solution to ethnocentrism, you know, of, of own culture group only. And then, you know, just positively evaluating other cultures and, and cultural differences, like in awe, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. You know, look at that. I wish that um, you know, I was raised to be like that or to do that or to understand that, okay? Um, in, in the developmental orientation of minimization, this individual would highlight cultural commonalities but can mask deeper recognition of cultural differences. Um, from a dominant perspective um, or a non-dominant cultural perspective, this can happen, okay? Um, minimization is an orientation that majority of, um, statistically speaking, majority of people fall within minimization. And so when you look at the um, bell curve um, and the standard deviation of how many points lie within minimization, most of them lie within this um, development orientation. Um, and so we, we like to discuss early versus mid versus late minimiz minimization when um, in reference to this um, orientation specifically. If someone's in early minimization, you know, they may assume commonalities and 
not fully recognize cultural differences when present. Um, if it's middle to late minimization, they, they may accurately recognize these cultural commonalities and differences, but they may not fully be able to attend to those differences. Um, you know, uh, feel that they should, um, that they've been taught to, that they shouldn't focus on those differences, you know, only the commonalities. Um, may believe that a focus on commonalities is best in order to effectively achieve organizational goals, okay? Um, may truly believe, you know, hey, we're all alike. Um, and, and, you know, if we focus on how we're different, that's just gonna cause conflict. Let's avoid that, okay? Um, and in the case of being from like a dominant culture group, you know, they may feel as though you know, I don't really feel my feel myself as having a culture. I'm a dominant group member, but I I don't see how I actually have a culture. Okay, um, and if from a non-dominant group, you know, it's the go along to get along. Um, I'm gonna emphasize my similarities, you know, so that I can be most effective in, in, in order to succeed, you know, get, get along, not ruffle any feathers, okay? Um, acceptance um, starts to move into the intercultural mindset, the global mindset. Um, and this is because it recognizes cultural commonalities and differences in, in their own as well as other cultures. Okay, so moves out of that space of feeling like um, they're not tied to um, a culture themselves. Um, curious, you know, very interested to explore. Committed to, you know, cultural diversity agendas, you know, actually, you know, really talking about it, really communicating, branching out, um, you know, getting people involved, like having discussions, walking the walk. Uh, or, or I'm sorry, talking the talk, um, but not exactly sure how to walk the walk. Yes, I'm I'm going to to steer this in the face. I'm going to discuss the hard things. I'm going to you know uh, communicate hard truths. But what do I actually do? Um, is it, sort of how acceptance feel. You know, um, a little confused on what steps to take behind the talk. Okay. Um, acknowledges the relevance and, and role of culture, but very unclear how to appropriately adapt to that cultural difference. Yes, I'm, I'm aware that that's there. I, I know it's, it's important, but how do I authentically engage? Okay, um, likely to ask how to questions, how to X, Y, Z, or, you know, curious. Um, because there's all of this confidence in what to say, but there's not enough confidence on what to do, okay? In adaptation, an individual is able to shift cultural perspective and adapt their behavior to cultural context, okay? And context, we know, um, is very wide and varied, okay? Maybe looking for more ways to effectively bridge cultural commonalities and differences, okay? And, and that's an action step if we see. Um, may feel frustrated at the progress that an organization as a whole um, is making in, in terms of intercultural development. But when we, when we see this, statistically speaking, most people lie within minimization. You can imagine, um, that someone in adaptation has a very hard time um, understanding why someone is in minimization. Okay, it's sort of a, why don't you see what I see? Okay, um, and if we um, can place ourselves inside of these different um, developmental orientations um, in the workplace, we can even assume um, what types of actions or um, what types of consequence results can happen um, with certain people in the room, okay? And this is why this is a, a really important thing for 
um, workplaces to be adapting or adopting in order to figure out, hey, what is our baseline? Where are we as an organization um, as it relates to effectiveness towards our goals, effectiveness towards our um, our programming or our diversity, equity, and inclusion measure uh, methods, okay? And um, once we know that, you know, how do we um, push the needle forward? Because as we see, the further we get along, uh, the further to the right we go on the continuum, the more we are um, prone to action steps, okay? Um, there are a lot of organizations that um, understand the importance, um, but they don't know exactly what to do, okay? We've seen that time and time again, um, you know, year after year when we have the same metric that's saying, hey, we're just at the discussion, we're just at the exploration, um, we don't know how to move forward. And, and it's really interesting to note that a way in which to move forward is to move forward the um, personal developmental orientation of the individuals in the workplace in order for the organization to also grow um, and build effectiveness um, towards um, moving further along in the continuum. Okay, um, we're going to um, play a quick video um, in summary um, for workplace um, applications or indications. How would you assess the intercultural competence of your workplace? How is your workplace impacted by cultural diversity? The current Intercultural Development Inventory, or IDI, developed by Dr. Mitchell Hammer, answers these types of questions as it measures five core mindsets and associated behaviors of intercultural competence. The Intercultural Development Continuum describes these mindsets from monocultural to intercultural, each mindset generating very different approaches for engaging diversity and creating an inclusive environment. The monocultural end of the continuum begins with denial and polarization. A denial orientation sees more observable cultural differences, but often does not notice deeper cultural patterns, for example, in conflict resolution styles. Polarization notices difference, where difference is often negatively judged from an us versus them viewpoint. One form of polarization is defense, being less critical towards one's own cultural values and practices and overly critical towards others. Another form of polarization is reversal, an overly critical view towards one's own group and an uncritical view towards the practices of other communities. Polarization mindsets value employees who can quickly be brought up to speed on how we do things around here. Denial and polarization mindsets produce an assimilationist approach to talent staffing, where diverse talent is expected to fit into the workplace, largely defined by the dominant cultural group. In the workplace, assimilation can take the form of sink or swim for new hires. Leaders with this mindset typically assume new hires can figure out how things are done in the organization, just like they did. Behaving differently from how things are done here often has negative consequences, resulting in diverse individuals often feeling ignored, uncomfortable, and experiencing a sense of bias as their contributions go unrecognized. In the middle of the continuum is minimization, a transitional orientation between monocultural and intercultural mindsets. This mindset values commonalities but de-emphasizes difference. For dominant group members, minimization tends to lack deeper cultural self-awareness, including awareness around power and privilege. For non-dominant group members, minimization is often a strategy to adjust to the dominant culture's values and practices. For example, a go-along to get-along strategy. With a minimization mindset, leadership typically supports a universalist approach by focusing on the elimination of bias through common policies that assure equal opportunity for all. Clearly, these efforts improve cross-cultural relations, yet the universalist approach does not address how to value diversity or bridge across cultural differences. As a result, diverse perspectives and experiences 
are typically not fully heard. On the other end of the continuum are intercultural or global mindsets. Acceptance understands and appreciates culturally diverse perspectives and behavior, while adaptation is responsive and adaptive to difference. These mindsets create a cultural bridge model in organizations and educational institutions. In this approach, cultural differences are integrated into the organization's DNA. Domestic and international diversity are seen as resources for multicultural team effectiveness, and cultural competence applies to everyone. The cultural bridge approach supports diversity and inclusion goals with its focus on intercultural competence building and mutual adaptation. The result is diversity feels understood, valued and engaged in the mission and life of the organization or educational institution. The IDI, measuring and tracking the progress of intercultural competence along the intercultural development continuum. For additional information, visit our website or contact us. So um, that is um, a really good segue into um, the ways in which an organization can infect, uh, effectively um, utilize the intercultural development uh, model. There are um, five intercultural developmental uh, development tracks, okay? Um, these are the different, the only ways in which, you know, you can utilize the IDI to, you know, develop, to develop staff um, or even students um, and, you know, in your organization or educational institutions, okay? So, there's an individual development track, okay? And this is where, you know, someone takes the IDI personally um, and then they get their individual intercultural development plan, okay? This is um, the groundwork, I say, the, the very beginning foundation to how we can um, further expand upon this. If there were more um, individuals who took it upon themselves to do this, even as, um, you know, uh, the uh, personal development, a lot of organizations um, pride themselves on um, championing if their staff um, do personal development, um, and this will be a good indicate uh, a good example of that. Okay, then there is the team or group development track, um, and this happens when you know there is a group, an organization, um, you know, an executive uh, team um, cohort or a board member, a board. Uh, um, board members of an organization, okay? If all of these individuals take the IDI, um, but an IDI group profile report um, was generated, then there could be an, an IDI guided development training um, for the group's average. Um, now, yes, someone in the group may be in adaptation and someone in the group may be in minimization and someone may be in polarization, um, but um, as an average, as a whole, um, the group will, um, you know, effectively work um, together based off of their average. And so when you take the group profile report, um, you're able to developmentally push along those who are further on the left of the continuum, um, but then also um, helping people who are in intercultural and global mindsets um, have more patience or move beyond their curiosity um, to, to more action steps, okay? Um, then there is an organizational development track, okay? Now this is, uh, could be more large scale. Now this is when you're doing, um, using IDI large scale as like a baseline assessment, okay? Um, everyone takes the IDI. Okay, and when everyone takes the IDI, we are now able to um, start to impact things like policies, practices, structural changes, um, tr training design. Okay, um, then there is uh, the, the development track of program evaluation, right? Um, how many times do we have these amazing uh, programs? Um, or models of programs and organizations, okay? 
um, they have these goals, they, they have, um, you know, action steps to their goals, they have timelines. Um, but then oftentimes there isn't exactly a measure of its success, okay? Um, so there can be an IDI pre-test and an IDI post-test. Um, what happens when we assess the baseline of the um, developmental orientations in the beginning versus at the end of programming? How, how much more effective um, is the organization or group? Okay. Um, and then there is the, um, the selection development track, which um, you would only do through um, restricted to, you know, IDI LLC. Um, the other program tracks, um, as a licensed qualified administrator, I can help or facilitate with that. But if you're doing selection development track, which is, you know, for hiring, placement, promotion, um, you would deal with the IDI organization um, uh, uh, solely. Okay. So, <laughs> excuse me. I wanted to go into some case study summaries. Um, that give a more tangible feel into um, how this shows up. Sure, we can communicate the definitions of these orientations over and over, um, but sometimes it's hard to actually um, see it or feel it or um, understand it um, in, in, in a practical sense, okay? So um, this case study, um, it, it was a, it was basic the IDI was basically a cornerstone of a three year strategic diversity plan okay um, for six thousand managers and employees within a large healthcare business okay significant gains and also in, in significant gains in intercultural competence resulted um, along along with other key outcomes for example increased leadership participation in affinity groups okay. So um, the individual development track happened where it was a DNI council members receiving their individual profile feedback. Um, there were monthly meetings to build the council members intercultural competence, right? You know, even going to, um, you know, lectures such as this or um, participating in other cultural events that are different from your own are examples of uh, ways in which you can um, strengthen your intercultural muscle, right? Um, then there, there was the team development track where um, the DNI council received their group profile debriefs also, okay? Council members became more supportive of diversity efforts. Um, leadership volunteered, uh, leadership volunteered as sponsors for uh, affinity groups, and 100% of all senior leaders participated in diversity training. Okay, now um, there was uh, the organizational development track. Okay, now the IDI was administered to the GNI council members. Okay, as we said. And the IDI basis for developing a three-year diversity plan for the 6,000 staff was, was able to be implemented. As a result, more formalized diversity programs were established to better understand the organization's diverse customer base. Okay. Um, and, you know, when we're when it came time to evaluate this program or, or the program track, um, the IDI administered one year later to this council, um, the same council, the intercultural um, competent, the intercultural did increase um, and intercultural competence resulted, okay? And the result we see um, was more effective programming um, you know, in their healthcare organization. Okay, um, the more and and it's and it's really interesting, right? Um, we see where originally um, it it didn't have any reference to participation and 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 things of that nature, 
and we'll, we're seeing that just through um, strengthening, strengthening the intercultural muscle, there was more participation, there was more involvement, um, more action. Um, when I'm going over all of these case studies, what I see is that the ability and the capacity to take on more action or effective action that is actually um, navigating change um, often, often happens more. Okay, um, another case study was at a large public university. Okay, the IDI um, is, is basically embedded in the intercultural development of the faculty, the staff, the administrators, and the students, okay? Um, administering the IDI alongside targeted interventions, including the group profiles, the individual debriefs, um, and the use of the individual development plans. Okay, all of this resulted in significant gains in intercultural competence. Um, and that's one thing that's really amazing is that when you take this assessment, having the tool of your debrief, having the tool of your development plan um, that actually helps you um, with what to actually do to um, move along the continuum or strengthen this muscle is, is amazing. Okay. Now, on the individual development track level, these students receive their individual profile feedback, and the individual development plan was actually integrated into coursework and written reflection, um, and this was assigned by the professors, so they're also um, a, a part of this. Um, on the team development track level, um, targeted student cohorts received group profile debriefs. So maybe the senior group of students or the, um, the nursing students or the, you know, et cetera, right? Okay, and um, the ID, and then for the program skipping organization development track, um, but going to the program evaluation track, the IDI was administered as a pre and post test for short term study a broad program um, and a semester long course. So um, it, it just goes to show that the different ways or the different opportunities or intervals in time in which we can test, well, how, how have we been doing? How have we progressed? Okay, and, and we did see uh, in this uh, case study, we did see significant gains in intercultural competence. Okay, and, and this increased intercultural, intercultural competence is only going to um, bleed into um, their their workplace or their careers, um, you know, after graduation, um, their internships or or what have you. Okay, um, going to uh, another example, um, um, and this is uh, in the in the realm of um, philanthropy, you know, changing that culture. Okay, so administering the IDI to CEO led nonprofit teams within a multi-year peer action learning network program was the foundation for designing an effective intercultural leadership effort across the state of Michigan. Okay, after one year, after just one year, significant gains in intercultural competence, you know, IDI scores resulted along with actionable outcomes. And I always think that's the most powerful thing, actionable outcomes. Um, and, you know, for example, development of more inclusive policies and practices within um, participating organizations, okay? So, um, from an individual development track, the CEO-led team received their individual profile feedback, okay? The team development track, um, the, there were CEO-led teams that received group profile debriefs, you know, so maybe the board members and then maybe um, the executive team or the HR team or the, you know, what have you, right? Um, these teams participated in six seminars over the course of one year, right? So, you know, it's just like getting your intercultural coaching, you know, over time, expanding that muscle, working with someone who can see outside of your um, orientation and, um, you know, provide you with the support and to move along um, exercises to help you move along in intercultural competence. Okay, um, so teams engage in intercultural action projects in their own organization. Um, and I love that they keep using the word action, so I think it's really important. 
um, cultural considerations of customer needs are now a part of customer service training. Okay. Um, you know, which is, is really huge, you know, in areas where it was not considered at all. Now there's entire, um, training modules and, um, you know, uh, practices built in, um, for cultural considerations. On, from an organizational development track, um, the IDI was administered to peer action network program participants. More inclusive policies and practices were implemented as a result. Um, they held their first ever statewide estate planning workshop for um, LBGT um, IQ members. Um, revised anti-discrimination policy that had been in existence for, you know, who knows how long. There was racial equity and valuing people now um, and, and two success factors in annual reviews. And now the IDI is included in all onboard training of new hires, okay? For the program evaluation track, three years later, you know, the IDI is administered again and competence increased by an entire orientation or more, um, which is really significant because um, usually in intercultural development as we're um, moving along the continuum, an individual doesn't usually go from polarization to adaptation. It doesn't usually work that way. There is a, a process of moving along um, and we generally we move up one orientation at a time. And so um, when we go three years later and have an assessment that says we've moved multiple orientations, that says a lot about um, the progress um, and, the, and the timeline is um, congruent with moving multiple orientations. Okay, um, and I just want to give some of those uh, real life, those real life tangible examples that um, um, uh, d do did exist, I should say, um, with using the IDI. And I think that that gives us um, a window into um, thinking about how can we um, consider how something, how a tool like this can be used in our own organization or, um, you know, in the Rank Fork Valley um, community wide. Okay. Um, we have a, an amazing um, uh, community here in the Rank Fork Valley where um, there are many efforts and uh, many eff and many initiatives um, all working ultimately towards that common goal. What would that look like if we, from an organizational or a team developmental track, um, had different um, organizations um, take the IDI and come together as you know as a whole in the Roaring Fork Valley? So that is definitely um, one of my goals. And putting out this information is um, really doing a, um, a community-wide case study in our own area. Um, to see, you know, what benefits and action steps and, and plans could potentially happen um, if we um, took that step. Welcome to this presentation of the Intercultural Development Inventory, or IDI. Within this program, we will describe this tool and its practical applications as a panel of IDI qualified administrators share their real world experiences with the inventory. The current version of the IDI developed by Dr. Mitchell Hammer is a 50 item questionnaire that measures intercultural competence along the intercultural development continuum. This continuum, as described by IDI research, is based on validations and revisions of the developmental model of intercultural sensitivity originally proposed by Dr. Milton Bennett. Consider how you understand and behave toward people from other cultures who think and act differently from you. The IDI describes these ways of thinking, feeling, and responding to cultural differences in terms of five core intercultural competence mindsets and behaviors. These mindsets range from the monocultural perspectives of denial and polarization, the transitional mindset of minimization, and the intercultural or global mindsets 
of acceptance and adaptation. Take a closer look at this continuum. What do you think your own primary orientation is? Research indicates you would probably not be very accurate. Does this surprise you? IDI results show that people typically overestimate their own intercultural competence. After all, it is a natural human tendency, again confirmed in research, to see ourselves as more capable than others may view us, or as more competent than we actually are. This tendency to overrate our own abilities can have positive effects. For instance, it can motivate us to reach for goals we might otherwise not try to achieve. However, when it comes to being interculturally effective, this can be a blind spot where we think we are more adaptable to cultural diversity than we actually are. The IDI allows individuals and organizations to overcome this blind spot, allowing targeted development of intercultural competence that otherwise would not be effectively achieved. Extensive validation studies confirm the IDI is a rigorous, cross-culturally generalizable, valid and reliable assessment of intercultural competence. Further, studies confirm this inventory is not culturally biased. IDI profile results provide real-world information on how a group or individual navigates cultural differences and commonalities. Research shows strong predictive validity of the IDI in achieving organizational objectives and educational goals. This tool is available in an educational version and an organizational version with results professionally prepared in customized group IDI reports, individual profile results, and tailored intercultural development plans that give you a clear map for building intercultural competencies. The IDI is translated into many languages and can be used for baseline assessments, team building, and individual coaching and development. Now let's take a closer look at each of the five intercultural mindsets and behaviors. We'll begin with the monocultural mindset starting with denial. Denial sees more observable differences but may not fully recognize deeper cultural patterns, for instance, in conflict resolution styles. This mindset may also avoid or withdraw from interaction with people from different cultures. A denial orientation often reflects limited experiences living in other countries and sees the importance for newly hired diverse members to fit into the organization. However, denial may not equally value diverse approaches that are not as familiar. As a result, diverse individuals can feel unsupported and ignored. A key developmental step is to focus conscious attention and learning on observing cultural differences that may be escaping notice. We invited a group of professional IDI qualified administrators to discuss their experiences working with individuals whose profiles revealed various mindsets. Let's listen to the experience of someone who has a denial orientation. Robert um, works for a major law firm. He is their business manager and he's been with them now for 25 years. His Developmental orientation is in denial. Denial for Robert, let's, let's have an example of a meeting where things really went off the rails, okay? And he was, he was running this meeting and one of the gentlemen in the group um, was from uh, an Eastern culture. I believe this was a Chinese individual. And the Chinese individual was not making eye contact with him and Robert got very upset about this and actually pointed it out to the individual in front of the group. That, that he's not making eye contact, that he should be making eye contact, and he was showing no respect. And, and talking to Robert about that is, is it's, a, it's an interesting discussion because Robert doesn't think we should be going to culture. Culture shouldn't have anything to do with this. This is still about respect. When his boss wanted to talk to him about some of the situations that were going wrong, and it, and it had to do a lot with this initiative they're doing. You know, Robert, we're, we're doing this initiative um, because we need to become much more interculturally competent and Robert insisted that he was wrong, that this was about respect and, and it put Robert in a very bad position there for a while. This, this is where it was taking him, this, this attitude of not wanting to deal with cultural differences. Polarization sees cultural differences from a more judgmental viewpoint that can take the form of us versus them. One form of polarization is defense an uncriticalness toward one's own cultural values and practices and an overly critical view toward other cultural practices. 
cultural difference is seen as an obstacle to overcome, divisive, and perhaps threatening. Further, someone with a defense orientation may feel under siege from diversity. Others can perceive this mindset as a sense of superiority towards the values and practices of culturally different groups. This can happen because of an overemphasis on negative differences toward other groups and less attention on the commonalities that exist across cultures. In organizations, defense may support training efforts for diverse talent to learn how things are done here, without equal support of how different experiences and skills can be better included in the organization. Another form of polarization is reversal. Reversal is an overly critical view toward one's own group and an uncritical view toward the practices of other communities. This can lead to an idealization of some cultures and their way of life. This mindset also takes on an us versus them view, but in this case, other groups are the good guys and my culture is the bad guy. Reversal can also actively support the cause of an underrepresented group. However, this is done with little deeper understanding of what the other group's cause means to members of that group. When polarization is present in a group, diversity often feels uncomfortable and may experience a sense of bias with their contributions unrecognized. Here is an interview about someone who views cultural differences from a defense orientation. Uh, Marisol is from Spain and uh, Marisol uh, was born and raised in eastern Spain, in a large city in eastern Spain. Uh, she was raised and these are her words in a very traditional Spanish family. Uh, she was raised with three brothers, and she describes her father as patriarchal. Um, Marisol is at polarization. Uh, that takes the form of defense as measured by the Intercultural Development Inventory. This basic orientation that she has is not helpful to the U.S. students that she's working with. Um, she regards the behavior of young U.S. women who are studying abroad as scandalous, uh, she says that they are making themselves to be sex objects, that they dress inappropriately, uh, that they share information inappropriately on their, uh, uh, on their Facebook pages. Um, she's frankly appalled at their behavior. Um, she doesn't understand why the students won't embrace, to use her word, uh, some of the traditions of Spanish culture. Um, for example, uh, she herself is uh, an aficionada of the bullfights. And uh, while she acknowledges that there are people who don't like bullfights, she cannot understand that there are students who simply will not go to a bullfight. That what she's doing is she's polarizing tremendously. She polarizes uh, anything that the students do that reminds her of the issues that she had trouble with in the United States, which are consumerism, U.S. foreign policy. Uh, the fact that after 6 p.m. she says nobody is on the streets. Uh, the fact that U.S. Americans are boring in conversation. Um, that uh, the U.S. students are not engaged enough, that they don't know anything about Spanish culture, that they can't speak intelligently with their host families, and on and on and on. The issue really is her affect, which is profoundly polarizing. The world consists of them and us, and she's in an embattled situation. Okay, great. And um, we'll, we'll go deeper into those, um, but I just wanted to give um, another um, tangible example, the more examples, the more um, familiar, familiarity that we have um, with how this can show up, with how um, this doesn't, you know, you know, we don't want to just assume that if an individual has a monocultural mindset that they have malintent or anything like that. We can see how um, very realistically we can um, almost um, identify with how um, someone engages or um, based off of their own experiences um, why they um, say or, or um, do the things in which they do, okay? Um, so I'd also um, like to um, go into the, just real quickly, briefly um, discuss the um, the validity, um, the, the, there's a cross-cultural validity of the IDI. Um, and um, that is something that I think really helps organizations um, stand by and 
and a, a stand behind a tool such as this is um, that it's a psychometric tool. Okay, um, this uh, the IDI validation actually meets the AERA, the APA, and the NCME um, psychometric criteria um, for instrument development. Okay, um, also to um, something to um, consider. Let me just find the give you information for it here. Um, oftentimes, um, depending on where you are in on the continuum, there may be a uh, a sort of disconnect or or disbelief, if you will, um, of the validity. Um, of the assessment, and um, that is um, something that can um, definitely be further explored, um, especially if anyone has um, questions about that at all. Um, you can either send me an email at rainforexshowup at gmail.com, um, or just let me know if that's something that you're um, interested in going deeper about. Um, we definitely um, can. Okay, um, and then lastly, I just want to um, communicate about, um, you know, IDI and, and social concerns, okay? Um, you know, when we use the IDI, we're not uh, presuming to tell um, an individual or a group, you know, what their, or where they should be, you know, hey, um, your, your, as a group, your baseline assessment is polarization. You absolutely need to, to be an adaptation. That is not necessarily um, what this tool is for. It's more so to help organizations and individuals understand how they're, the kinds of challenges they may be facing in achieving their stated goals, um, you know, are, are uh, congruent to, you know, their current IDI orientation, right? Um, if there are no challenges, if there are no stated goals, then then this becomes an, uh, an, an irrelevant measure. But um, if there's an organization that says, hey, we're challenged here, hey, we want to um, be here in, a, in six months to a year, three months, um, these are our goals that we have not been able to obtain as of yet. Um, usually we can go deeper into the IDI orientation of that organization or group um, as a way to push forward through, um, from those challenges, move forward and progress um, towards those stated goals. Um, and I think that's something that's really powerful to note is that this tool um, is really, um, it can be present to, um, you know, progress towards stated goals um, and out of the zone of challenges. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, how does the IDI relate to, you know, equity or, or, or um, social justice, anti-oppression or, you know, un unconscious bias work? It's, it's, it's definitely relevant, but, um, you know, with equity, you know, one has the capability to make more equitable decisions from an intercultural mindset than from a monocultural mindset, okay? Um, from an intercultural mindset, one recognizes the relative nature of equity um, and that you need to have a complex understanding of differences to be able to even discern how equity is viewed from the perspective of those different cultures, okay? Um, because equity isn't necessarily the same for, for one cultural group versus another or one person to another, okay? Um, further, you know, IDI, IDI research suggests that building more equitable communities requires deep understanding of the cultural factors that inhibit it, okay? And I'll say that again. Um, IDI research suggests that building more equitable communities requires deep understanding of the cultural factors that inhibit it. Um, cultural capital, you know, a, a dominant group's preferred values, beliefs, behaviors, ways of communicating and interacting is a very important form of human capital 
and is culturally determined. Um, if a person or a group doesn't share these same patterns, whether that's, you know, implicit and explicit, you know, discrimination can occur. Um, many things contribute to equity, but it's clear that cultural and intercultural competence matter in significant ways. And, um, and that is a, a very um, good way of communicating its relatability. In, in terms of social justice, um, IDI research has shown that one can be committed to social justice across different levels of intercultural development. Um, just because uh, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, everyone that's out here championing social justice is, is an adaptation. Um, but that more effective action for social justice occurs, you know, in the intercultural stages of acceptance and adaptation. Yes, there are people out here championing, championing social justice and minimization, championing social justice and denial um, because they mean well. There isn't malintent, but how effective are they? What are the challenges that they constantly feel like they're facing? And why do they feel like, you know, they may have more challenges than someone um, in acceptance and adaptation? Um, the reason for it, you know, is because social justice efforts take cultural context and differences more into account um, from, you know, from those orientations. Um, so um, intercultural competence also, that development doesn't ignore or deny, you know, the fact of oppression or racism. Um, using the IDI and the, you know, the, the IDI guided development creates a more inclusive environment so everyone can participate in the conversation and ultimately develop mutually beneficial solutions. Oftentimes there are um, the dominant group members coming to the table to communicate about um, other group members that are not in the room. Well, how are we actually building um, effective, mutually beneficial solutions when only one side is heard, okay? Um, then we consider, you know, unconscious bias. You know, one of the barriers to becoming cultural, culturally competent is our unconscious bias. And, and we do um, sort of go into that in the cognitive psychology lens lecture. Um, but as we develop skills for cultural competence, one of those skills is the ability to manage our unconscious bias. It's not that it's not there anymore. It's managing it. It's being aware. The IDI reveals that at earlier stages of intercultural development, there's a great, there's a great deal that, that, that persons are unaware of, such as patterns of cultural difference, lived experience, and community history, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but by being unfamiliar with these things, it's easy to engage in practices that are discriminatory um, in impact, um, even if not in intent, okay? And I think that's something that's, that's really, really um, profound for us to take in, right? It hurts sometimes. It hurts to know I'm participating in something that is discriminatory, right? I, I, don't, I don't agree with discrimination. How am I, how am I fueling it? Um, and we can see that based off of um, just not being aware, you know, um, because of our, uh, our, our mindset, our, our, our developmental orientation, that allows us to, you know, unknowingly engage in something that's harmful to another cultural group. Um, we don't know it's harmful. We're just living our day to day because it's not harmful to us. So we don't notice. Okay. Um, and, and that is something that's really powerful to understand is that while organizations mean well, their impact can, can, can show otherwise, okay? Um, and oftentimes it's, it's not about the intent. We understand that um, the intent is well, um, but we also need to determine how can our, in, how can our intent um, match our impact. Okay. Um, and so uh, that's how I'd like to close us up for today's cultural competency in the workplace.